that you know you really don't need it Leave the fame for the road I remember when I was leaving Hello and welcome to the Valentine's Day edition of Cracking the Cryptic where we've got something really, really cool for you today. Um, this puzzle on the screen, um, well the puzzle behind this, this box, is called uh, Happy Valentine's Day and it's backed by Jack Isaac Bryan. Um, and when it came in, it had a dedication in the title. It said, um, for Arathi, um, which I, I presume is uh, Jack's partner. Um, anyway, we've worked with our programmer, Sven. So huge th thanks to Sven for the work he's done on this over the last couple of days. But we've now made it so that you can type in the name of your Valentine here. Uh, I think it, yeah, look, it just, it just does it. And then you can, you can, Put your Valentine in. I'll I have to work out who I'm going to put in. I should have thought about this before I started the webcam, shouldn't I? Um, probably best not to put in anyone real. Is it somebody from the Sudoku community, maybe? Should we do, should we do totally normal cat? Or, uh, ah, I don't know, <laughs> Fistenfell, Jay Dyer, Clover? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who to put in. And I'm not sure who might get offended if I put it in. Right, we're not going to do anyone real. In fact, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, um, I'll, I'll do one for Mark. So I'm going to put Mark's Valentine in. Um, I'm going to put Bridget in, which is a bit of an in-joke. It's, it's probably not really his Valentine. But anyway, look, once you've put your Valentine in, it says for Bridget, and then you, put, you click create link. And it, and it does it. It creates a link. So you can now send the puzzle um, you can copy this, or I think you can right-click it, yeah, and just copy it, and then send send the puzzle to whoever your Valentine is, and they will get a sort of uh, a personalized personalized Sudoku to play, which is just a lovely idea. So I encourage all of you to think about it and then send Sudoku love around the planet. This would be an absolutely lovely thing to do. Now let's just see if I click open link. Does this Wonderful software work. No. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Look there for Bridget. <laughs> Tells you the rules. Jack Isaac Bryan. Um, so, so yeah, Jack Isaac Bryan, thank you very much uh, for sending the puzzle in. I'll test to say it's lovely. Um, and I'm sorry, Arathi, that we've um, we've replaced the dedication to you with the personalised uh, dedication today. But I hope I hope lots of people have a lot of fun with it. Um, and I'll read the rules formally in a moment or two. Um, what, do, what else do I need to tell you about? Well, it being Valentine's Day, I do have a few shout outs to do. So uh, I will get through those. I want to say a very happy birthday to Craig from your partner, Helen. Um, she says happy birthday and also happy Valentine's Day. And she assures me that you're a huge REM fan of which I applaud mightily. Maybe we will get a three in the corner today. We shall see. Um, Mason, it's your birthday, and I know this because your friend JT wrote to us. Malachi, Malachi, you've turned 10 today. And I know this because your dad Daniel wrote to us, and I have abs absolutely love hearing about our younger viewers. So Malachi, happy birthday. Um, Jamie, you've turned 22 today, and I know this because your partner Megan wrote to us. And Megan also sent us the Christmas present that she made you which I think was a crossword. It seemed to be a crossword based on prime composites. So all I would say, Jamie, is that you've got a good one there. Well done. Um, then Michael, I know it's not your birthday over there in Manitoba, Canada, but your girlfriend Megan wrote to us, another Megan, and said um, she would like a shout out for you. And I'm very happy to do that. So, Michael, I understand you're a big fan of the channel and I hope that you have a brilliant day. I'm not sure if just being it just being Valentine's Day is an excuse for chocolate cake, but it feels like it should be. And then, oh, and now I've got an apology as well. Vic, Vic, I messed up. It was your birthday on the 12th of February and I was meant to read out your birthday then and I'm, I, I didn't I didn't record it properly and your friend Jack I know will be very disappointed in me as I am in myself but Vic I hope you had a great birthday and were able to have some cake back on back a couple of days ago. Um, that's it. The only other thing I wanted to say it was um, a huge well done to those of you who are still battling with the glum hippo 
Sudoku Hunt, which is our February monthly reward for our patrons over on Patreon. Uh, it's the Fossil Hunt. You've still got one day to send in your answers if you want to shout out on the channel. Still got until the 20th if you just want to have a chance of winning the plushie, which I know lots of you want to win. Um, and well done to the following who did get through the whole thing. Uh, Pablo Boy Shida, Paul Wright, Morgan Piper, Shane and Alicia Cook, Jens Pankoki, Anthony Carona, Hans, Hannes Christian Arneson, not Hans Christian Anderson, however much my mouth wants to say that when I see your name, Hannes, um, Hendrik and Alex, and Hendrik, congrats on the birth of your daughter last June. Um, Joseph Duncan, Ryan Walker, Mark Greenwell, uh, Ethan Stauer, or Shadows maybe, Shadows? I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. David Clare, Eric Maxwell, oh, um, Bart Lemaistrakowski. Oh, I have a feeling I've got your first name wrong. I'm so sorry. You, you have to guide me if there's any doubt. Um, Anthony Bailey and Stefan Cole. Brilliant work, one and all. Now, let's have a look at Happy Valentine's Day for Bridget. And I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. Okay, so let's explore what that means. So imagine we had a one in the middle of the grid. Now this means that we couldn't put a one in any of these cells, any of these cells I've just highlighted, because if we did, if we tried to put a one here, why has it done that? Oh, ah, okay, so there's some sort of conflict che checker that's being turned on by the fact that um, we're in a new version of the software that Sven has made cleverly for today. So let me see how to turn that off. I don't like the conflict checker being on because it feels a bit like cheating to me. Don't pause on start, check on finish. No, no, don't want that on. Conflict checker on, I want to turn that off. Is there anything else in here that might check pencil marks? I don't think I want that on. I mean, this software is unbelievable now. There's so many things in it. Let me just kill a calculator, goodness me. Um, experimental let's see what oh there is a dark mode alpha replay mode tool it's just amazing do support support Sven he is he manages to create wonderful treats for us like this uh, like what we're doing today anyway so th if this was a one and this was a one the software was showing us this is illegal in this puzzle because they are separated by a knight's move in chess and we aren't allowed to do that um, now, what else? Adjacent digits on a red line must differ by at least five. So normally when we have our red lines with the, well, when we have lines with this rule, we make them green. Um, but for obvious reasons, with it being Valentine's Day and us having kisses and hearts in the grid, they are red today. So what does this rule mean? Well, let's imagine this square here was a one. Now this cell, and this cell for that matter, would have to be at least five different from one. So they would have to be six, seven, eight, or nine, and that would have the same quality. Um, we get one given digit today, which is the two up here. Do have a go. Do play the puzzle on whichever or whichever device takes your fancy. The ways to play it are to click the link under this video or to click the link you got sent by your Valentine today. And I hope that you enjoyed being sent a Sudoku puzzle. Frankly, I can think of no better Valentine's present. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see, see what Jack Isaac Bryan has created. And it looks to me like we're going to have to understand how the hearts work to start this puzzle. Now, that almost certainly requires us to know two secrets about red lines. So let me let me tell you those secrets. One secret is this. You can never put a five on a red line in this puzzle, because if you did, you will have a lot of difficulty working out what the next digit's going to be. Because if this is five, this has to be at least five different from five. If we go downwards, we get to zero or negative numbers. We can't put those in this Sudoku. If we go upwards, we get to 10 or higher and we can't put those in this Sudoku. So five is illegal. Now what that means is that we can basically put any digit that we put on a red line and we can categorize it in one of two ways. It's either going to be a digit that's lower than five or it's going to be a digit that's higher than five. 
And that's interesting because basically we'll, we'll find that these digits oscillate as we move along the line. So imagine this was lower than five. Well, this digit, even if we made this as small as we could and we increased it by the minimum we could, which would be five, we would still get to six, which is the other side of five to one. In other words, we keep having to oscillate. Um, we call it oscillating polarity. So if this was low, we would know this would be high, then we would know it would flip back low again, etc., etc., along the line. So what typically we would want to do when we get a red line in a puzzle like this is to shade it in. Um, so let's do that. Oh, because I'm in a because we're in the beta today, I've got different shading colours to use. Never mind. Um, let's let's shade in some colours. So hang on, let, I could get this wrong, couldn't I? That one. So what I've what I'm what I've done there is I've shaded alternate digits along the line, and I know that these digits are all either they're all low, i.e. they're all ones, twos, threes, and fours, or they're all high. They're all six, sevens, eights, and nines, and the same is going to be true then of the other cells on the line. Now, one thing that immediately uh, strikes me as important is can I now colour this heart as well? Obviously I can colour this heart within its own within it within its own geography if you like. So I know that those three digits have the same polarity and that one has the same polarity. But I don't think um, I don't think I know yet whether or not blue equates to purple or blue creates to, or equates to grey and that's going to be a very important thing to find out. So let's just stare at this for a moment and see if we can... Obviously one thing I can see immediately is if, the, if green and grey are the same colour then that's all four greens isn't it? And that would be all four blues because blues and purples would then have to equate. Hmm. I can't immediately, I thought I might be able to disprove that by thinking about the sort of monogamous digit. <laughs> we can definitely talk about monogamous digits with it being Valentine's Day. Um, what do I mean by the monogamous digit? Well, when looking at whisper lines, we've discovered we can't put five on them at all. Now, two digits can only ever have one partner on a German whispers line, and they are the digits four and six. Um, so I refer to them as monogamous. So if this was a four, for example, what could this digit be, given it needs to be a digit that's at least five away from four? Well, the only digit it could be would be nine. So it only has one partner. And you can see that this square can't be a four because that would have to be a nine as well. Similarly, if we try and put six here, six only has one partner, which is a one. So I was trying to use that to eliminate the possibility for gray to be the same as green, because it's quite difficult to put. If this was a set of four green digits, one of them would have to be the four or the six. And you can't put a four or a six here because those two cells would be the same. You can't put a four or six here because those two cells would be the same. And you can't put a four or six here because these two digits would be the same. But rather irritatingly, I think you can put a four or a six there because when you do the double nine thing, those two cells don't even see each other by the knight's move, which I've just realized I'd totally forgotten <laughs> until I was just making that point. Um, Okay, so perhaps it is the knight's move then. Is there a way of... Is there a way of thinking about it from that perspective? Oh, there's another thing I've just noticed. Look, if purple was the same as blue... Ah, that this might be the way to do it. Right. I, imagine purple and blue are the same polarity. So they're all either low or they're high. Then this square would obviously be blue. In fact, let, let, let's, let's do this. Let's make purple blue for a moment. And then the corollary of that is that grey 
is now green. So we end up with this pattern. Now this is broken. This is broken. And the reason we can see it's broken, there may be more ways than one of doing this, but I've seen one way. I'll tell you the way I've seen. Um, the way I've seen is that none of the blue digits in box five can now be that extreme monogamous digit. Um, and we know one of them must be because these four digits are all different. So the, imagine blue was low. These would be a set of the digits one, two, three, and four. And I'd have to make, I'd have to put four into one of these cells. Where are we going to put it? If we put it here, this becomes double nine. That doesn't work. If I put it here, those become double nine and they see each other by the knight's move, which I have now remembered. If this was a four, both of those have to be nine. And if this was a four, both of those have to be nine. And those see each other by the knight's move. In other words, we could not pay, place the monogamous digit within the realms of blue. And that means that in fact, this line down here, we can now do. Those are not blue, those are green. Therefore, these are blue, these are blue, and that's green. And now we have a totally different pattern to think about than the one we were looking at before. We've got four greens in column six out of nowhere. Have we got four of one color anywhere else? Not seeing one. So maybe this is where we look next. Because And the reason I, I think that this feels natural is that one of these cells has to be that, that monogamous digit, and it can't be that one. Because again, if we try and make that the four, well, let's do the sixes this time. If that's six, that has to be double one. That doesn't work. Um, if this is six, these have to be double one. And that, that does work. Ah, okay, so this might not be a good way to... No, that, that one still does. Oh, no, this is fine. This is right. What, uh, this is great, in fact. Look, this can't be six because those two would be double one. They see each other by night's move. So this one isn't the six or the, or the monogamous digit. Can that be the monogamous digit? No, because these two cells will be the same and they definitely see each other by Sudoku. So in this column, this digit is the monogamous digit within the green set. Now, the moment we know this is four or six, we know that the adjacent cells are the sort of the polyamorous digits, the, po the polygamous digits, <laughs> because these cells have to be, uh, well, these are ones and nines, which have the most potential partners. Um, so a one can partner with six, seven, eight, and nine. A nine can partner with one, two, three, and four. All of those digits are five away. So this cell sort of reveals the nature of these two cells. Um, now, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to do is to get a, f f I get, I'd like to get more green or blue shading done here. Can I? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to do this. Sorry, I'm, I'm, my brain is now not being helpful. I, I know within blue, those two digits are also not extreme digits. So if this was a four, what I'm saying is neither of these could be the, the blue six, because again, that's going to put the same digit either into the same row or a knight's move apart. So within blue, these three digits here are not the monogamous digit. So they're either two, these are either two eight or three seven, which now do I know the same about that Digit. Is that capable? Well, that's not capable of being the monogamous digit within within the blue set, is it? Because then those two would be the same. What about that one? No, that's not either. Right. So what we've now, because 
So these three digits are actually the same digits as those three digits because none of them can be the blue four six digit. So we can use the knight's move. So that digit is the same as the, so those two digits are the same is what we've just learnt. Um, how do I record that? Well, I, can, I suppose I can make them two, three, seven, and eight, but those two are specifically are the same. So let's give that a purple flash. These two are definitely the same. We'll give those a yellow flash. Now, can I do any better than that? Do I now know what this one is? Yes, I do. That's lovely. It's absolutely lovely, right? <laughs> that within blue is, is the blue monogamous digit because it sees the three non-monogamous digits. What do I mean by that? Well, this cell, it sees purple, it sees yellow by night's move, and it sees that one, which is the polygamous digit. So that must be the four or the six, which means these two cells are the one nine within green. So now that one we know can't be a four six because the both of those would have had to be one nines as well. So these are also two, three, sevens and eights, but this time within the within the green set of digits. So that's so these oh what that seems to be saying is that these four digits together are the complete set of greens. I don't know if that's important. I mean which means that that digit should be the same as that digit. Um, by Sudoku. Let me just double check that. That cannot be 1-9. It sees 1-9. It cannot be 4-6 because it would force these two to be the same. So it must be 2, 3, 7 or 8. The same is true here. So by Sudoku, those two digits are the same. Let's put that in. 2, 3, 7 or 8. That's not 2 actually. So that means that's not 2. Um, and these two squares need to be flashed or something to show me they're the same. What's that digit then? So that digit is one or nine, isn't it? it within the green set, it sees gray, it sees whatever that is. So it sees the two, three, seven, eight combination and it can't be four, six. So that's one, nine, which is the same as this one. That one, that one is not four, six by night's move. It's not gray. So it's either uh, so it's either that one or it's one nine. Oh, I don't know that we know the answer to that. What about oh that one also? Do I? I don't know what that one is either. I don't think. Ah, right. How do, how are we going to do this? I'm also conscious, actually. I, I was conscious of it as I removed the two from this square. That... Oh, I've... Have I got this? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, good grief. Right. I've answered my own question. <laughs> I've answered my own question. <laughs> okay. This is cool. This is cool. What I was about to pontificate about, rather... Um, ineruditely was I was about to say that how were we going to distinguish whether green for example was from the high set or the low set and the only way I could see that the puzzle would tell us the answer to that was the given two because nothing else about the puzzle is going to explain which set is which there's nothing mathematical or there's nothing eliminatable um, by reference to anything else. But I've just realized how this has done it. It got rid of two from this square. So the next question that we need to ask is, could this be a three, for example, an actual three? Now, if it's an actual three, what are those two digits next to it on the blue line? Well, we need digits that are five away at least from three, which means these would have to be an eight, nine pair. But they can't be an 8-9 pair. Look at the options for them. And that's because the moment we make this a 3, green is low, so blue is high, so this would be a 9. So you can't make this a 3. It doesn't work. 
and if you can't make it a three, we've suddenly revealed the nature of green, which is high. And what's more, and what's more, you can't make this a seven, because if this is a seven, it's the equivalent of three, just from the high numbers. In other words, if this is seven, this would have to be a one-two pair to both be five away from seven. And if this is seven, that's a one, so that doesn't work. So this is actually eight. And now we can just go through all the green digits and pick high ones as the, from our options. Ah, this is cool. This is very cool. Oh, we don't know what that one is. That's either. Oh, no, we do, because if we, if we do from our shading, it's eight. Um, which means that these two squares are a two, three pair, which is fine. That's absolutely what we'd expect. We know that the blue numbers are low now. So if we get the option, we pick the low number. Um, this is a two, three pair. We can, I don't know, we can probably do better. What's that? We must know what that is now. It's not six, it's not eight, seven or nine. Uh, oh, that's a three, look, by Sudoku. So that's a two, that's a three, that's a two. And that is still unresolved because it can go next to two. Ah, bobbins. All right, okay, that's one. That's going to be four then. So that's nine. This square is, uh, th what is it? It's high, so it's seven. And it's next to two, which means it, oh, I was about to say, yeah, that's right. Um, the only digits that can go next to seven on a whispers line are one and two. Well, this can't be two by the knight's move, so it is a one. And suddenly all of the shading is absolutely done, except for this cell, which I'm a bit perplexed about. But I suppose I now know what those squares are. They're four, five and eight by the medium of madness that is Sudoku. I know where the eight goes. That can't be eight by knight's move. That can't be eight by Sudoku. So that is eight, which means that eight is in one of those two cells in box four. Um, this column needs four, five, and th oh, three. Okay, let's put that in and see if we can do that. That can't be four. That can't be three. Um, yes, there could be about to be an explosion of children's noise. <laughs> Let not that disturb your thought processes, Simon, or those of you who are listening to the video. Um, okay, so maybe, maybe we're going to do nine is in one of those squares by Sudoku. Nine is in one of these squares by Sudoku. Let's, let's greenify the eight so that it's it's got consistent colouring with its friends. Uh, this box needs four, five, six, and seven. Ah. These cells are all a little bit far away for the knight's move to, to apply. We need, this, we need these cells to be affected by Tigger bounces or sort of kangaroo jumps, don't we? Rather than just simple knight's moves for them to affect these cells using... Um, using that sort of logic. Okay, well, it's going to have to be these other shapes then. This cell looks interesting because if that is high, it can only be six, which it can't be. That's lovely. Right, this square cannot be high because if it was high, it can't be seven, eight, nine, so it would have to be six, which is monogamous. So that goes next to the polygamous one and that polygamous one, unsurprisingly, sees its friend there and it mustn't do that. So that cell is it's definitely not five. It's definitely low and it's not one. So it's two, three or four, which is not four because it sees four in those one in one of those two cells. Given one of these two cells is a four. If that was a four, you couldn't then place four in box five. So this is two or three. This is high, therefore, but it's not six. So it's seven, eight or nine. Can't be six because this can't be one. Can't be eight, sees eight, so it's now seven or nine. Um, and I suppose what we're meant to do is to highlight these cells as well, which of all, by, by oscillating polarity, these are all low. Those are not ones and fours. So these are a two, three pair now, which means this can't be seven, because if that was a seven, it, it would have to be next to one and two on the line. 
3 and 7 are not 5 apart. There is a knowledge bomb for you from Cracker the Cryptic. So that's a 9. This square, uh, well, 9 is the most poly polygamous digit, so it can have all the partners it likes. Um, yeah, those. this cell I don't think is affected by the points of this cross. Oh, no. I thought I could do something with 9s, but no. What about... Oh, that's lovely. Right. Twos and threes in this box. Where do they go? And the answer at first blush is we don't know, but we do sort of. Because can that square be a two or a three? No. Because we know that's a two, three pair. So if I make this two, I'd wipe two out of both of those and they both have to be three. That doesn't work. And if this was three, the same logic applies. They would both have to be two and that doesn't work. So in fact, we've got a two, three pair here, which must mean that these three squares are four, five, and six. Let's just quickly put that in and see what we can get rid of. Four and come out of there because of the knight's move. Okay, <laughs> didn't do anything. <laughs> That's done absolutely diddly squat. Oh dear. Okay. All right. Let's try. Let's try row seven then, because all of the low digits are approximately placed, and that means that the gaps here are either the digit five or they are high. So these are five, six, seven, and eight, and that square can't be six or eight by knight's move. So that is five or seven. Five, six, seven, or eight. That one. Is not seven five. Hmm. Okay, I'm not seeing any massive restrictions there, so I'm a bit loath to. I'm a bit loath to immediately start wading into pencil marking those. Right. Let's try this cross, perhaps. What about that square, which is the closest we're going to get in terms of knight's move jiggery-pokery? We can say that uh, that cannot be one or th three. Actually, maybe it's better. No, it's better to look at high digits. This cell can't be nine. It can't be eight. It can't be six by knight's move. So if that is high, it is seven. And then this square would have to be one or two, and it couldn't be two. So that if, if this is high, this is definitely a seven here and a one here. If this is low, it's two or four. Oh. Well, it's not actually, it's not four, is it? Because in this column, four is up here. It doesn't seem to be able to be there because of this four. So if this is low, this is two. And this digit then would have to be high, which is going to be at least seven. So it would be seven or nine. Now, can we get rid of anything from there? Um, the answer seems to be no. Oh, Bobbin's, Bobbin's face. Ah. Uh, Oh, no. Okay, this is not where to look. This 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 limb of the cross is not where to look. What about that square? That's better. That square can't be low at all. It sees one, three, two, and four, because we just said there's a four up here. So that's high, which means it's either six or seven, because it can't be eight and it can't be nine. Now, if it's... Right. Well, whatever it is, that square is a one. Oh, that's beautiful. It's going to do the other limb. This is really lovely puzzle, Jack. Um, yeah, this square here, if that's a one, well, it, whether it's six or seven, the only digits that can accompany six or seven on the whispers lines are ones and twos. Now, that can't be two by knight's move, so it is one. That removes one from this square, which means this must now be low, which means it is two. And I'm sure that does something. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Um, no, no, I don't know what it is. Okay. No, sorry, I haven't got this at all, have I? Uh, 
Hmm. Oh dear. Okay, maybe we've got to look at this one then. So, okay, there's, well, a ring that's entirely within a box in a German whispers line is you can immediately take the monogamous digits out. If we try and make this a monogamous digit, it's, you're going to get a repeat on the line straight away. So three of the digits are instantly rule outable from this line. It, it can't be, it can't have a four, a six, or a five on it. So this is made up of ones, twos, threes, sevens, eights, and nines. Which means that... Is there anything we can get rid of there for sure? Nine can't appear on this line anywhere, I don't think, because we've got the nine here. And if you try and put a nine in one of those two cells, you'll you'll eliminate nine altogether from box two. So, so the high digits on this line are from... Oh, the, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's beautiful. That's all I need. Okay, I just need to tie two thoughts together from different parts of my brain. And all of a sudden, light dawns. Yes. Okay. So, so if we just said that there are no monogamous digits on here, so it hasn't got six on it, I've just said it doesn't have nine on it, but it's four cells long. So we know that it's got to have two high digits on it. And those two, tight, tight, two high digits now are seven and eight. And all we don't know is where they go. Are they in that orientation or are they in this orientation? That square can't be an eight. That would rule eight out of those two squares. So can that square be a seven? If that square was a seven, that would be a two and that would be a one. And that would be an eight. I actually think that might work. That's the only way I think this square is p capable of being high. Now, if on the other hand, oh, ooh, no. Yes, okay, I see, I see how to do this now. Right, I have to take that thinking through forward a bit more. So I've worked out the two high digits, the seven and eight. Now that means that there is a seven on this line, but wherever I put the seven, it must be surrounded by one and two. So the next question is, are there certain positions here that are going to make that impossible? And surely there are. For example, that square cannot be one or two because it sees one by knight's move and two by Sudoku. So that square is not capable of being a low digit on this line, and it's not capable of being an eight. So I think by that implies that's a seven, which means that's a one, that's a two, and that's an eight. That's really quite, that's really quite clever, isn't it? Not of me, I hasten to add, but of, uh, of Jack. Now that's not eight now, so that's eight, that's nine using our pencil marks. Um, Eight comes down here, look, by Sudoku, which lines up with the eights here. So we should ask where eight goes in this row. And we can see it's not at the end. So this becomes eight. How many eights have we got? Lots. We've just got two more to find. Can we do some knight's move trickery to find the last ones? Apparently not. Um, right. Oh, seven here means by Sudoku I get a nine here and a six here. We'll take that. This square is not able to be a one anymore. This one down here. So this has got to be um, something else. Three. Three in box two is a, is a mildly restricted digit. It's got to be in one of these two cells. But where does three go in box three now? It can't go here because of this three and the knight's move restriction. So it's got to go there. Let's put three in. So are we going to get a three in the corner? Maybe, maybe down here is looking where, where that's looking at the likely place we might be able to put one. Um, one, four, five, seven. Uh, okay, now I'm getting stuck. But we've near. it's funny, isn't it? Because we've nearly used 
all of the all of the red lines. So what we've got to do here is just figure out figure out an efficient way of, of, of solving the rest of the puzzle. Five, six and seven are in these squares. Now can I do anything with that? I don't think these squares see enough. I really don't. Am I supposed to understand? Oh, look, I've got a four or a five here, I've just noticed, to complete row two. Um, one. One is in one of these two squares in box number, box number three. Seven is a little bit restricted in this box because this cell rules it out of those two. So seven's in one of two places, which means seven's in one of these two cells. And okay, so two, three, six, and seven in this column. That can't be a two or a three, can it? By exactly the same reason that we said that cell couldn't be a two or a three, this cell can't be a two or a three. So that square is a six or a seven. Which is almost really good. I have a feeling that we can do something more with that, but I can't see how to do it. Oh no! Come on. How do we... How do we resolve? Is there, is there some sort of technical reason why this can't also be a two or a three? Something to do with sort of breaking the pattern down here or something. I don't think so. Um, or five, six, seven. All right, no, we're going to have to, we're going to have to think harder. Two, look, can't go there apparently. So there's a 2-3 pair down in this corner out of nowhere. Oh, that, <laughs> that feels like it's trying to do something. Um, 4 is up here, isn't it? 4 is here. So this, so this down here seems to have to be a 4-8 pair now. So we're slowly building up some, some pairage here and there. Can we reduce this cell by any manner nor means? Apparently not. We've got the eights living down here. So within this box is it's oh look, what's that square? That's five or seven. Is that helpful? No. <laughs> oh no it is. No, it is. Okay, I hadn't spotted this at all, as you'll have been no doubt. This seven actually means that, uh, yes, the question we should ask is where does seven go in box two? It can only go there. Does that help me? So that gives me a five here. Oh, it does. It does. Look, that gives me a three. Oh, no, it does, but it doesn't give me a three in the corner now. What about... No, I can't get one up here. There's a three in there. Okay, we're not going to get three in the corner today. So sorry about that. Um, uh, sorry about that. Who was it? Craig, who's also an REM fan. Um, okay, I, I was sort of doing that a bit on autopilot then as I was trying to recall names. So what's that done? Let's put a three here. Give, it's given me a four five pair there. And this has to be a six seven pair now I suppose down here I don't know if we can do it yet can I do anything with um, you yes I can this digit is a six or a seven so where does it go in box six and you can see none of those squares can be six or seven so it must go here but were it to be a six, it would be a nice move away from itself. So it is a seven. So seven, seven, go into the grid. Seven goes, ah, I finally fi figured out that early, that early pencil mark that's been hanging around unresolved for some time. Uh, that's now a six, look, because of this seven, six pair resolving itself. Six is in, can six go there? Six is in one of two places now in box number four. 
I'm, sh I'm sure there's some reason it can't go there, but I can't spot what it is. Okay, well, let's try. Should we try one, five, six, and nine down here? Can we get rid of. Yeah, we can place one. So these have. Because of the knight's move not be allowing it to be here, which gives us the nine. So we know that these are five and six. And the five here is lovely. So the five goes here. Wow! That's still four. That becomes a six. This column hasn't got a five in it, so that does some fives and fours. Gives me a four over here, look. Um, that's six, does the six and the seven. How many sixes have we got now? We have got a lot of sixes. Maybe, maybe row one, we need one, six and nine. So that's a naked single, sees one and nine, which puts one in the corner and nine over here. So those two squares are four and nine, which we can do. Nine goes here, four goes here. So these squares are three, five, and six on this side. Can we do it? That's not three by knight's move. So three goes here, six goes here, five goes here. That knocks the six out of this square and puts it here. So we need fours and fives into this row. And uh, for some reason that's not resolved that oh this square now we get the six that's the only place the six can go so this has become four or five how do we do this final unwinding i still haven't got these twos and threes done either which is perplexing fours and eights no that doesn't seem to want to resolve um Okay, let's try this column. Two, three, four, and seven. So that square is apparently four or seven. And that square is not three, it's two, four, or seven. But it's not two because we know that there's a two, three here. That gives me a four, seven in the column. It means this. So I have got a sort of, oh, I see. And that being a two, three pair means this square is now resolved. So that becomes two, that becomes three, that becomes two. Now, have we now? <laughs> and this is one of these things about, look, knights move. I was about to say, it's something that's very easy to just slip up and miss one or two possible knight's moves positions and it completely throws you. So five in this box seems to have to go here. Um, over here we need to put one in, don't we? We've got one, oh, we've got a snooker maximum, a one, four, seven to place. So that square is a naked single, it sees four and it sees seven. So that's seven, that's now four, that's now seven. This is a four or an eight. Oh no, 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 don't, no. Oh, it's this four. I was suddenly thinking I've got a four, eight deadly pattern, but I don't because this four reaches in the long arm down here and says, no, 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 you cannot be a four. So that gets us eight and four. And we're gonna put one in as the final digit. And that is how to solve a very, very pretty puzzle indeed. And Jack Isaac Bryan, I hope your puzzle is sent round the world in a flurry of Sudoku love. Um, so please do, if you enjoyed the video, um, do try it and find some somebody to send this to. Uh, tweet it at them, email it to them, WhatsApp it to them, and let's see if we can make Happy Valentine's Day go round the world. Thank you very much for watching. What a pretty puzzle, hey? And absolutely loved it. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.